Is that it? <sighs> Hi and welcome to another Extronical Quickie. In this episode we're going to look at this. The BME 280. It's a temperature, pressure and humidity sensor. And you can see it's very similar to this one. This was the last Quickie episode which was the BMP 280. This only does pressure and temperature, whereas this one will do pressure, temperature, and humidity. Now, that comes at a price. These are approximately twice the price of one of these, maybe a little bit more. So relatively, they're expensive, but it comes with everything on. Otherwise, if you only have one of these, then you want to measure humidity, you might have to get something like this. This is a DHT 11 sensor which I did a video on about two years ago and one of the reasons I'm not adding this into work with this so I've got pressure temperature and humidity is one of the things is this is now failed it doesn't produce a reliable humidity result the, the result the value it was given was way off uh, so what's the point of having one of those as well when you have one of those one of those you may as well just get one of these as an all-in-one package now if you look they are incredibly similar. In fact, the connections are all in the same place. So if you've already wired this up from the last episode or you've wired one of these up before, if I just pull that out, we can actually slot that straight into the same connections. And if you can look, they look very similar. We'll just get the camera to focus. We'll bring them up to camera. But they look extremely similar. If you turn them over, they look almost identical on the backside too. You can see the actual center area, or metal can here, is slightly smaller than this one. So let's discard that one. Don't want that anymore. Let's pop this one in. So the wiring is identical to the last sensor, as I said. Just quickly going over it, we've got the power and the ground, and obviously they're linked to this rail, which is going straight from the uh, ESP32, three, volt, 3 volts and ground. And then we've got the SDA, the data line, coming to pin 21 on your ESP32 and then the clock line going straight to pin 22. Normal R2C connections. You can connect it up on SPI if you want to, but if I'm not desperate for any extra speed boost or anything, because SPI can be quick if you push it hard, then I like to stick with R2C. Okay, so you're going to need a library to talk to these chips, so go up to tools, manage libraries, and go into the filter box and type in Adafruit BME 280 and that's the library you want. You should presumably probably only get one like I have. I've already got it installed. You just click install there and away you go. So it goes then to file and examples. Come down to the BME 280 library and click on the BME 280 test. If you run that and upload it to your board, the chances are it'll come up with this bit here saying it can't find the sensor or it should be such and such an address. If you look, they're expecting a BME to wait to be at address hex 0x60. However, we've got cheap sort of like Chinese, whatever, clone. And on this clone, just like the BMP 280 one I was using in the last episode, in the last quickie episode, it's actually a, val um, a hex address of 0x76 for the I-squared bit C bus for this one. So in here, where it says BME, BME begin, 0x76. If it's not that address, and you still get a result that you can't find it, double check your wiring, then run an I2C scanner. I'll put a link in the description down below for one. That'll tell you the address of whatever device you've got on the I2C bus. And again, put it in there, and everything should be good. So let's upload that, and have a look at the results. So I'll go into Serial Monitor. You'll see the results coming up, updated about one second. Temperature 22.43, the pressure 961, and an approximate altitude, which we'll ignore for now, and the humidity. If I just stop that scrolling, it'll be actually clearer. And a humidity, humidity of around 60%. Outside at the moment, my local weather forecast is showing me I've got a humidity of around about 90% on the outside of the house. And the vast difference is there is because it's quite a cold day where I'm living today. And cold air does not hold quite the amount of moisture in the air that warm air does. So obviously my house is quite a bit warmer 
and it's holding more moisture. Having said that, they recommend that a hive should not be any higher really than 50% of humidity for comfort levels to help stop mold growth. So I need to actually tackle some of the humidity levels in my house. So that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed that. That should have been done in under six minutes. So if you liked it, hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to know any of those sorts of information, have a look in the description down below. Until next time, catch you later. And, of course, thanks for watching.